So for my, the book that I read for my foyer project is called Cloud Atlas, and for my title I wrote The Meaning Behind the Clouds, and so um, a little bit further on I'll explain like, why I titled it that. But the book Cloud Atlas, it comes in 11 parts, and there are six separate narratives throughout the story that um, span different times and different places all over the world. Um, and so the first five parts all end in cliffhangers, and then the sixth is a full story and it ends. And it kind of acts as a narrative mirror because um, the other stories close in reverse chronolo chronological order from that point on. Um, so first, the first story is about this guy named Adam Ewing, and he's on the ship, and um, he's traveling. He's originally from San Francisco, and he's a notary in San Francisco, and he's traveling back to San Francisco. But what he doesn't realize at the time is that he's really sick, and it's the doctor's telling him, oh, you have a parasite, but the doctor's actually poisoning him. And so, and then the slave nurses him back to health. So the idea there is that even the, peop the people you think are supposed to help you end up hurting you, and then the people you would least expect to help you end up helping you, I guess. Um, the second is uh, letters that are written by this guy named Robert Froshbeyer to his friend Rufus Sixsmith. Um, and Robert Froshbeyer is a guy who, um, he's uh, kind of an outcast from England, and so he ran away to this um, guy named Ayers' house, and he's acting as like, a piano teacher in a sense, but he really doesn't know how to play the piano whatsoever. And yeah, he's writing letters to his friend, Rufus Sixman, which like they all connect somehow later on in the story. Um, the third story is about this um, girl named Lucia Ray, and she's a journalist for this big newspaper, and she's trying to get a hold of these letters um, from Rufus Sixman about, he's a scientist, and he like reported on this big company who like has a problem with their nuclear reactor thing, and they don't want anybody to know, and so Lucia's on this whole journey about trying to like expose them, and like there's a lot of like, she almost dies a lot of times because people are trying to kill her, and so. And then the fourth story is about this um, guy named Timothy Cavendish, and he's a six-year-old man, and he's put in a retirement home when he shouldn't be there because his sons won his company, and so then he escapes with all of his friends from the nursing home, which is really actually kind of a funny part of the story. Um, and then the fifth story is more in the future, and it's about this, she's not really a robot, but she's like a fabricant, and so like, she looks human, but she's kind of a robot, I guess, and her name is Somni, and um, she like, she gets into a huge trouble because she like, moves up the ranks and she learns, and she's not supposed to learn, she's just supposed to do what she's assigned, and so she gets in huge trouble with that. And the last story is about this guy named Zachary, and um, he um, is kind of back in a Stone Age sense, because, um, uh, He's like telling a story about how humans used up all the resources and destroyed everything around them and basically brought themselves back to a stone age, so like a new stone age, I guess you could say. And so that's how the story reflects. Um, the most important thing about Cloud Atlas is that the entire book is a book of connections. So what you don't realize, you don't realize it until the end, but all the characters are reincarnations of each other, but just in different time periods. And they all have connections in the stories that you like wouldn't see it the first time, but then when you go back and read it again, you realize. Um, so the first thing is, in the first story, Frostfire from the second story discovers um, the jur journal of um, Adam Ewing from the first story, and it's in two parts, because that kind of goes along with the theme of the book, which is that all the stories are in two parts. And then Lucia Ray discovers Frostfire's um, letters to Rufus, and so she reads them, and she um, also manages to hear the music that Frostbire composes. Um, and then the next story, Cavendish, um, he receives <coughs> Lucia Ray's story. So that Lucia Ray isn't actually real. She's a book character. You don't realize that until Cavendish is reading her story. And then in the next book, Somni watches a film about Cavendish. And then Zachary, the, in, the final, in the sixth story, um, he... Um, watches a movie about Somni and like what she went through and so it kind of goes back um, through the stories but they all have connections so it kind of gets a little confusing and then the last thing is that the main characters all share comet shaped birthmarks which is a cool point um, the main thing that Mitchell wanted to take away from this book is that we all have a universality in human nature and so like a quote from him was that Literally all of the main characters except one are reincarnations of the same soul in different bodies throughout the novel, identified by a birthmark. Jack, that's just a symbol of the universality of human nature. And he was saying that the title itself, Cloud Atlas, refers to the manifestation of the atlas, which is basically saying that the cloud refers to the ever-changing manif um, ever um, manifestation of the atlas, which is the fixed human nature that's always the same. Um, but it never changes in a sense. 
And the main point that I would take out of this is that we all share a human nature and that even though we don't realize it, we are connected somehow and the things that we do always affect the other people around us.